uh, hi everyone uh, welcome to my channel uh, devops with cloud uh, in this channel i will be uh, mainly discussing about devops tools and uh, cloud technologies like uh, aws azure and google cloud and uh, mm, for devops technologies we will be discussing about all the cicd pipelines and uh, containerizing tools like docker kubernetes and helm and various other tools as well so if you want to uh, learn about these technologies you can subscribe to my channel and uh, i'll be teaching in both english and uh, telugu as well it's just an fii yeah and coming to today's topic uh, i thought of starting a series on uh, docker so just want to uh, deep dive uh, a few sessions on this so just to start like um, before uh, knowing what exactly is a docker let's spend some time on what how we used to deploy before uh, containerization came into picture okay so there are two concept that we should be much familiar of one is virtualization another one is containerization okay so the le the left picture shows you the first part that is virtualization part and other one is a containerization let's discuss about what exactly is virtualization okay so uh, before docker came into picture uh, we used to uh, deploy applications in this in this pattern like we used to have a, even now we are having the infrastructure right when we say infrastructure it's about the virtual mesh, i mean the the bare metal server that we have Uh, which consists of operating system the networking stuff the storage part and all okay on top of it we will be installing the hypervisor this is a software okay so we were familiar with few of the hypervisors like uh, virtual uh, vmware is one of it and uh, hyper v from microsoft is uh, one of the latest uh, hypervisor so we will be installing any that sort of hypervisor here and from there we will be installing uh, the guest operating system uh, the guest operating system might be Uh, of ubuntu we can have an iso file right so from that iso file we can install ubuntu uh, so we will be having a complete operating system and in that operating system we will be installing something called as a nginx or apache or something for the web server and on top of it we will be having uh, our application deployed so that application means uh, for any uh, application to use we will be having some artifact right some artifacts so that artifacts we will be getting from source code and that artifacts will be deploying on server okay so that's how we used to deploy like we 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 install hypervisor and on top of it will be having a guest operating system and there we used to install our applications but the main con here is like um, assume your infrastructure is of a uh, eight core cpu and uh, 64 gb of ram and you are installing just an uh, application of size only it it utilizes only two cpu cores and uh, maybe 3 foot 3 to 4 gb of ram so the other resources are under utilized okay so we can't utilize that here uh, before so but when we are come, when we are talking about virtualization we uh, we are utilizing them by making an other guest operating system and we are installing a new application over there okay so this is how we used to deploy our applications previously uh, where we can have a number of uh, operating systems like guest oss and when i say n of n number of guest operating systems it is directly related with your underlying infrastructure okay you can't uh, run 10 uh, ubuntu operating system with two cores of memory with uh, just 8 to 16 G gb of ram right so you need to uh, increase your size accordingly so that's how uh, we used to deploy uh, our application previously and that that way we used to usually call it as virtualization okay so uh, so what's the main reason that we are move, we moved from virtualization to the the containerization or otherwise we can call it as dockerization also okay so the main uh, advantage here is like uh, uh if you see here also we are having an infrastructure right uh, we are having a uh, what we call the underlying infra and here we are installing operating system whereas we used to have an hyper v hypervisor installed but here we are having an operating system installed so let's say i'm installing an ubuntu operating system on top of ubuntu i will be having container engine okay the when i say container engine 
this container engine can be of any anything that can be docker that can be rocket okay just to be aware the docker is not only the containerization tool that is available in the market there are many other uh, container runtime engines that we can use but uh, as docker is a much familiar uh, we are learning there so we will be having a containerization engine installed and from on top of it we will be having our applications if you see we eradicated the guest operating system right so we removed the bolt where bolt where over here so we can uh, we are having only the application and the respect to binaries okay so by using this type of architecture uh, our applications can build very fast and they can run it very fast because we are only having the res the required libraries when I say required libraries, let's take an example of an uh, the basic web page that we can deploy using uh, HTMLs, okay, the uh, web servers or something. If you are uh, uh, deploying an application and uh, if you want to deploy it in the virtual machine, so you are using all the underlying hardware, right? So you don't need all the guest operating system features in order to deploy a basic HTML page. So for that HTML page, only thing required is the Nginx server and the respect to binaries only to, to make your application run up and running. So we'll be creating in that way so that we'll be reducing the size of your application where it gets installed and uh, the runtime is also very fast, okay? So uh, that's the way how we used to, uh, we are presently working on the containerization technologies. As I again, I was again repeating, Docker is not only one of the runtime engine, we are having many other runtime engines as well. Okay, so we'll come to this slide again and again in the coming days so that we are very clear about this. So if you see uh, the architecture, how Docker was designed, so it's completely a client server architecture. Okay, so if you see the client here, we'll be installing Docker client. Okay, anyhow, I'll be installing a Docker on Ubuntu in a couple of in a few minutes from now <clears throat> so you'll be having a docker client and a docker daemon okay if you see docker daemon is in the docker host and when and when if you send any request docker client speaks with the docker daemon and docker daemon speaks with the registry okay these are the main three components two and three docker client docker host and registry okay let's say if you want to uh, run any image Okay, when I say run any image, uh, let's take this as example. Okay, uh, if you want to install uh, um, uh, WhatsApp or any other any other application on your mobile, so what you usually do is you you will be searching for the application, right? And uh, that searching of the application goes in this registry. Okay, it consists all the images. When I say all the images, it it might be a um, Nginx or Ubuntu images, or you can customize your own applications. Uh, okay, so all those applications will be, we call them as images here and that images will be deploying your applications. So all those images will be in the registry. So let me clear all this stuff again. Okay, so Docker client speaks with Docker daemon and Docker daemon searches for that particular application. If you are, if you're asking daemon to install Ubuntu, okay what docker client it sends a request to docker daemon and docker daemon searches here itself in the host if it is having ubuntu already present it will send you, send to the client back if not it will directly go to the registry down get the ubuntu download it here and again deploy back to the client so this is how a client server architecture works okay so uh, when i say um, Client every time speaks to Docker daemon only, okay? And uh, let me write a uh, few of the points so that it will be easier for you, okay? So first thing is it's a, uh, mm, yeah. Client server architecture. Okay, so size. Mm. Okay. 
and uh, if you see here uh, there is a docker client and docker daemon right so uh, docker daemon mainly hand it will handles few few sort of things okay uh, which are something like it will be uh, building your applications uh, running them and distributing as well so when i say building the applications <clears throat> what exactly it does is uh, it will be uh, uh, searching for the images in the registry and it will be downloading the image and that image itself been converting into a containers okay so we haven't discussed about images but uh, that's how the flow goes okay so uh, yeah so let's go and install uh, docker in ubuntu okay so i'm using an ubuntu machine which has been deployed in uh, amazon web services so i already uh, uh, provisioned one and uh, logged into it successfully so yeah. so how if you see here if i enter something called docker it was saying docker command not found okay because docker was not installed here so how we can install docker so docker ubuntu installation go to the docker documentation page if you see in the left side uh, there are various flavors of linux where you can have like docker uh, you can install it on centos ubuntu fedora and all as now we are installing it on ubuntu uh, let's try to use this sort of uh, document so yeah first let's see if there are any other docker uh, versions already installed we can uninstall them but for now but for us it's a new machine right so we don't have any and after that um, we need to set up the repository before that let me do an update uh, to registry okay it will update all the uh, registries and all okay so after that let me have the cert files also this is the way yes i want to install okay so let me this one also it's a gpg key okay if you see okay you are successfully installed i mean you, you are doing something good okay and uh, yeah this was the main step we can we will be installing the repository app repository for docker okay it was done so let me again update the repo so now i'm installing docker okay till now i did all the prerequisite for that and now i'm installing docker yes uh, all this can be installed using a script also if you see here there are various ways that you can install it uh, yeah here you can have this file script file what it does it all the steps that we uh, manually did right uh, till now all these are configured in a shell script file and you can execute directly that so that uh, you, there is no way th there is no need to install all these steps manually okay, it's installing mm. show something else So yeah. so yeah, it's Docker is up installed. Let me verify. If I enter Docker now, it is giving me some uh, response, right? So we will be discussing about all these management comments and all in the coming videos. But uh, for now, at least uh, a Docker got installed. Uh, let me verify the version. It's Docker 19 okay and if you see when i enter docker hyphen hyphen version it is just giving me the client one okay when i entered docker version it was saying docker engine client and docker engine server also 
okay so when you are getting these two that means you have successfully installed docker okay uh, let me introduce a few commands docker uh, if you see uh, docker images if i give there is there are no images right now right so uh, let me uh, pull a hello world basic image okay so if you see it is using latest and it is fetching all these details and now if i enter docker images there is something right so don't confuse for now we will be having it uh, uh, separate video on docker images and uh, how we can create containers on top of it but uh, this is how you can install docker on ubuntu so uh, let me one second repeat this one this is very important okay uh, how the um, so this is how this is what we installed till now docker client as well as docker daemons okay so when we are when we are entering any command like docker version or docker pull what happened is this sent a command to docker daemon okay i want to have a uh, what we call docker hello world image so as a, as that given point of time it doesn't have hello world so it went to registry and pulled the image okay but if again if i enter docker pull hello world it is directly it will be uh, it is directly image is already up to date that means this docker host already has the latest image of hello world that's the reason it is not going to here okay so that's how the architecture works between docker client daemon and the registry and in the coming uh, videos we'll be we'll be starting uh, our discussion on how uh, what docker images are and how we can create containers on top of it and uh, yeah that's for now uh, we'll meet you in the next video thank you